Hey guys, welcome to a follow-up video on emojis and their role in promoting activism. As you might recall from our last video, emojis can have many different meanings. Take the Statue of Liberty emoji. This emoji is just an American landmark and Emojipedia defines it as the Statue of Liberty, often used as a depiction of New York City. But if we look at these tweets, we might find that in context, the meaning of the Statue of Liberty emoji actually changes. Notice that each of these tweets also uses the hashtag no ban, no wall. And if you aren't familiar with hashtags, we'll get there in a second. But if you are also not familiar with hashtag no ban, no wall, this was a tagline that represented people's opposition to President Trump's travel ban on certain Middle Eastern and African countries, which essentially appeared to be a travel ban on Muslims from entering the United States. That's a very condensed summary of the matter, but even if you only know that much, what purpose might the Statue of Liberty emoji serve in these example tweets? Is it possible it is being used because these people are inviting the banned people to visit New York and actually see the Statue of Liberty after the ban is over? No way. The emoji is serving a different purpose. Here, the Statue of Liberty emoji no longer represents the physical landmark, in fact, it is being used as a symbol to represent freedom. And in this case, freedom for people to come to America. And thus the use of this emoji is unified with the message of hashtag no ban, no wall. The meaning of the emoji as freedom is so powerful that our, user, our first user simply tweeted enough said alongside the emoji. The emoji alone voiced his opinion. And tons of people just like these three here would use this emoji to unify their voices on this movement. The emoji directed the public's focus to the social issue. And just like that, you have been introduced to the powerful role of emojis in activism. So let's dig deeper. So activism is working together with other people to bring about change in society. And some ways people can express their desire for change may be to host demonstrations or protests boycotts, strikes, and even signing petitions. Actions such as these can draw a lot of attentions to a cause. It was actions like these that accompanied the women's suffrage movement between 1848 and the 1920s, when women were fighting for a right to vote, amongst other rights. If you look across history, you can see many ways that activism has led to change in society. You can see many ways that people work together to draw attention to their causes. We also see new ways that younger generations take activist stances. And one of those ways is to practice social activism consumerism, which means they like to make purchasing decisions based on whether or not the brand or company is perceived as socially as a socially responsible brand. Nike is one good example of this. Nike ran an ad late last year featuring Colin Kaepernick, the former NFL quarterback who sparked controversy by kneeling during the national national anthem. Consumers who oppose Nike practice social activism consumerism by cutting the brand's logo off their socks or even burning their sneakers because they disagreed with the social movement that Colin Kaepernick aligned with. Consumers who supported Nike also practice social activism consumerism when they intentionally purchase more Nike products as a way to support Nike's new social alliance. When people believe in something, they unify and they do their part to make their voices and opinions known. Some activist movements pick up popular and recognizable taglines, as was the case for the women's suffrage movement, which was strongly represented by the slogan, Votes for Women. If you saw someone wearing a Votes for Women button or holding a Votes for Women sign, you knew what cause they were fighting for. The slogan was emotionally and contextually associated with the movement. A more modern day slogan that you might recognize is former President Trump's Make America Great, Make America Great Again, shortened as MAGA. When you saw someone with a MAGA hat or someone with a MAGA sign, you knew what cause they were fighting for. Not all political or social activist movements come with a fancy tagline. And having a tagline is not an indicator of a good or bad movement. However, taglines like these can help bring an identity to your cause. They can help spread a message. They can help people recognize your message. They can help people unite under one voice. And for these reasons, they, can, they especially help in spreading a message on social media.
Now, clearly social media was not a thing in the early 1900s, but I imagine if it had been that we would have seen votes for women used as hashtag votes for women, since that is the slogan that is associated with that movement. In fact, if you search hashtag votes for women on social media today, you do in fact find that hashtag being used now to reference the historical movement. Now hashtags, if you're not too familiar with them, are primarily used to index keywords and phrases. I realize sometimes um, we use them for other things, such as to be funny, but the root purpose of them is to actually index our posts so that our posts are archived with other people under that same index. Actually, 75% of social media users share posts with hashtags on a daily basis, so you likely already know what hashtags are. In addition to archiving our own posts, we can also use hashtags to search for a topic. So if social media was a thing in the 1900s, we, could, we would have gone online and searched hashtag votes for women and had access to all the people that were talking about the movement at that time in history, as long as they were using the hashtag. And this is exactly what we were able to do with slogans like MAGA, Make America Great Again. From election day 2016 through May 1st, 2018, the hashtag MAGA hashtag was used an average of 200,000 plus times per day. So this hashtag actually allowed you to find millions of people who were talking about and mostly supporting this cause. We can do this with other movements too, such as the Me Too movement, followed as hashtag Me Too, which was, which was, it was and is roughly used 61,000 times per day on Twitter. Hashtags allow us to follow and participate in a conversation, and the process of using hashtags to index or be part of an activist movement is known as hashtag activism. Hashtag activism does a great job of uniting voices. Through this e-language feature, we can connect ideas and opinions, and it doesn't exclude voices, meaning it provides a platform for marginalized voices to join and promote conversation on matters that might otherwise be overlooked. Just as Votes for Women was a slogan that was emotionally and contextually associated with its movement, hashtag activism works the same way. Here are some of the most recent widespread hashtag activism campaigns of recent years. Hashtag Me Too, Hashtag Take a Me, Hashtag Oscar So White, Hashtag Ice Bucket Challenge, Hashtag He for She, Hashtag Bring Back Our Girls, and Hashtag Never Again. If you are seeing one that is new to you, the good news is that you can search that hashtag online and be immediately connected to its context. Again, this is a great benefit of indexing our causes with hashtags. You can easily return to the context and learn all about it. So you and I, we can use these hashtags to join in on social and political activism. And using a hashtag says a lot about your messages intent, your position on an issue, and support to that community. In activism, hashtags help communicate our opinions and our solidarity. Just as votes for women, hashtag activism is a strategic use of language to direct the focus to the social issue. Apart from slogans and taglines, activist movements can also often be associated with imagery. Take the rainbow flag, also known as the pride flag. This symbol has been recognized as an LGBTQ icon as early as 1978, so clearly before social media existed. We can also see the power of imagery in other movements, such as the For All Womankind movement that is represented with the image of raised women's fists, or even more widespread, the peace symbol which was designed in 1958 as the official logo for the British campaign for nuclear, nuclear disarmament, but has since become a relatively universal sign for peace. Probably not a surprise, but in addition to taglines and slogans, images can also be used to represent a concept and spread a message. And we're finding that emojis can be used in the same way. Just as a hashtag allows you to show support in a few words, an emoji allows you the same channel, but with even fewer keystrokes. In our last video, we discussed how emojis compared to hieroglyphics, and we discussed ideograms and pictograms. An ideogram is a character symbolizing the idea of a thing or concept, such as the prohibited emoji that essentially conveys the concept of not allowed. 
Alternatively, a pictogram is a symbol that represents a word or phrase and, and resembles the physical object, such as the cake emoji, which resembles a cake. When we look at emojis as they relate to activism, they are a good example of ideograms, an image that symbolizes the idea of a thing, or in the case of activism, the concept, just as the peace sign is an image that represents the concept of peace. When we look at emojis, a cl classic example is going to be the rainbow flag emoji, also known as the pride flag, which first became available as an emoji in 2016. Its representation or meaning as an emoji remains the same as the rainbow flag's representation back before emojis, which is to express support of the LGBTQ community. We also see this with the Statue of Liberty emoji, which we talked about earlier, which is a call for freedom. On the one hand, these emojis can act as pictograms in that they represent physical objects, the actual rainbow flag and the actual Statue of Liberty. But on the other hand, these emojis are ideograms in that they symbolize concepts, support of LGBTQ and freedom. So whether or not the emoji is functioning as a pictogram or, a, or an ideogram is determined by its context of use. Emojis like the pride flag are signs that direct the focus to the social issue at hand. Like taglines, like hashtags, like logos and images, emojis like these can serve as a tool for expressing people's experiences and opinions and attracting more support. They serve a role in activism. Now, before I go, I want to clarify that I've intentionally left one very meaningful growing social movement off of my video, which is Black Lives Matter. But I want to stress that I didn't leave it off of my video for political or social reasons. Not at all. In fact, it's simply because it relates to the next assignment in our class, and I didn't want to spoil it for you here. See you guys soon.